Well, it's been an exciting weekend full of workshops and office hours that have been conducted by the Stanford team, Apple Health Engineers, and Google Cloud Engineers. And people from all around the world have joined us to build these exciting products. I can't tell you how excited we are at Cardinal Kit to continue this particular excitement. This was our inaugural build-a-thon, so we weren't quite sure what to expect, but everyone really came out in full force. And we are looking forward to what the future is about to bring. We're lucky to have Oliver Alami, Ross Veruk, and the one and only Paul Yock, the godfather himself of biodesign, the man who founded the Biodesign Center, join us to give a little bit of a historical context and talk about what to expect in the future. So let's start with Paul with a little bit of a history of biodesign. Hello, I'm Paul Yock, the founder and director of Stanford Biodesign. You know, since our start 20 years ago, we got one thing right pretty early, and that is to focus on the, the clinical need, the needs of people in driving innovation. What's changed for us, though, in the last 20 years is our fellows and students are increasingly pointing us toward digital solutions. This has become an exciting part of the program. And so we're especially happy to be having the resources of Cardinal Kit available uh, for our young innovators as they develop new innovations in the health technology space. As founders of Cardinal Kit, we at Biodesign have really felt the pain of what it takes to innovate and how hard it is to uh, build digital health solutions um, in the academic system and beyond. There are so many stakeholders that you need to address and, uh, and satisfy, whether it's privacy concerns, security concerns, their technical issues, you know, building the front end, back end, and I as a clinician, you know, I'm not a developer, so that adds another layer of uh, complexity and difficulty. So that's what, you know, by design is really focused on education and, when, and that's what started off um, the CS342 course. The first time it was taught was last fall in 2019. And uh, we focused on uh, teaching uh, basically a very basic framework, which has become Cardinal Kit. And so we're super excited to be able to to um, spread that more widely within the uh, campus community at Stanford, but also more globally. And this is now spreading beyond, and Ross Vanuk, uh, who's also the head of engineering at By Design, has uh, been able to lever it as well. And Ross, you can uh, explain how you've been uh, able to leverage it. Yeah, thanks, Oliver. Uh, something that uh, we're excited about at Biodesign, uh, you know, we started as a program that was much more focused on surgical tools, catheters, uh, maybe implantable devices, things like that. And as the uh, health technology ecosystem has evolved, uh, we're also evolving and we're really excited about the new developments in digital health and uh, particularly excited about the involvement of, uh, of tech meeting healthcare. One of the challenges is uh, in biodesign, uh, we focus on understanding the clinical need really deeply. And as you said, Oliver, oftentimes the people who are closest to the front lines don't have the technical expertise uh, necessary to launch a project. And so a tool like Cardinal Kit is something that helps to bridge that gap and to enable diverse teams to collaborate and to move more quickly as they try to create new health technology innovations. This is something that we've seen uh, over the last number of years in biodesign as our fellows and as the students in our courses get more excited about connecting technologies and they're trying to figure out how to make use of, of the cloud and how to uh, use AI and other, other exciting avenues to accelerate the pace of medical technology innovation. And so this is, again, why I'm really excited about the work that the teams have done uh, during this weekend and into the future. Uh, Cardinal Kit is the platform and the community that's building here, uh, building tools for all of us to use uh, as, we, as we try to innovate and to bring technologies to more diverse populations uh, and to expand health technology as quickly as tech is growing. Thanks, Ross. 
I just want to plus one on something that you had said about, about machine learning in particular. I think machine learning presents tremendous opportunities for enterprises to be able to derive new insights from their data, whether it's creating new customer experiences, improving business operations, or helping the workforce to be much more efficient. And it also opens up the potential for businesses to be able to start deriving new value entirely from new sources. For example, unstructured text. Um, I wanna go back to, to something that, that Paul had said earlier. It's really focusing on the, the need statement. I know when I was a student um, going at, at Stanford, um, going through the biodesign program, we were really focused on identifying the need statement and really getting that just right. Um, Oliver, I'd love to hear more from you about how important it is to get that piece of it. Absolutely. Uh, there is so much excitement around meeting the patients where they are. And our you know, smartphones and mobile devices have kind of really opened, you know, allowed us to connect patients where they are. And what's really fascinating in by designers where you know, at any successful or or most successful solutions you know, have a need to have a very well-defined need in their DNA. And what's really fascinating about digital health is now when we did our initial need searching or need finding in the hospital, it was within the four walls of the hospital. And now digital health has let us kind of look outside of the hospital and meet, meet the patients where they are. For either scenario, it is incredibly, uh, it is very, very important to, to really spend a lot of time to uh, think about the need and to develop a, a need statement where you very clearly define the problem, the population, and the outcome you're trying to measure and change and affect. And that will really keep you focused and also help you kind of address all the stakeholders in the healthcare system since it is so complex uh, to come up uh, with the most successful uh, concept. You know, what, one of the things building on that, Oliver, that's most exciting, I think, about uh, the partnership here uh, between Apple and Cardinal Kit and Google being able to bring together developers like we have at this Build-A-Thon is the ability to reach out to patients directly, uh, whether it's through wearables or surveys or uh, other sorts of mobile technologies. And, you know, putting the different technologies together through Cardinal Kit allows young innovators well, and, and old innovators alike to actually reach out to those patients and get that data and get an understanding of what the patients really want, what they need, and what can benefit them uh, from a health perspective in ways that we've never been able to before. And so that's something that, again, really just excited about the different developments of this platform and the many different uh, users and developers who are here this weekend collaborating to help build those tools is something that's going to enable the future innovators to understand the patients better and to understand the needs better so that when they do develop, they can iterate quickly and they can find something that by the time it gets to market, they know is going to have great value for the patients, for the physicians, and for the health system. Well said. So let me ask the two of you this. What's the future of Cardinal Kit? That's a great question. It's only been a year since our first uh, class last year, and it's only the very beginning. You know, we built some really exciting features already to simplify uh, this, but we, we just want to keep adding more and more features. And, um, you know, right now we're iOS only, but uh, we do plan to support Android in the future. That's on our roadmap. Uh, so, you know, we just want to grow the, see the community grow and see digital health uh, flourish and and see patients' needs met, you know, outside of the hospital. So, Ross? Yeah, just, just to build on that, what I would say is that the future of Cardinal Kit, in my mind, is in the hands of the developers and the people who have come together here uh, and are going to continue pushing Cardinal Kit forward. The power of digital technologies is in the ability for people to build on what other people have done and to push very rapidly in different directions. I, I think the most exciting things about Cardinal Kit are probably the things we don't even know yet. Uh, you know, Oliver mentioned a few things that are important and we are excited about the community that we're building here of, of people who are going to, to uh, attack the existing wish list in terms of platform and in terms of 
uh, near-term capabilities. And then the future for Cardinal Kit, again, is the future of where the innovators, uh, clinical and technical, take it, being able to be more connected with, with patients and with the healthcare system uh, in, in the future of digital health. Great. Thank you, Oliver and Ross. Um, again, we want to just mention the fact that this was our inaugural build-a-thon. We weren't quite sure what to expect when we set out to plan this event. But again, we are very, very excited about what the future is about to bring. So please do give us your feedback. Reach out. Um, tell us how we can be better. Um, what are some of the features that you would love to see? And we look forward to hearing from you and the amazing progress that we know you're going to make from the tools that we've given you to kind of build this digital health ecosystem in the future. Thanks again. Let me know if you can see my screen. Okay, fantastic. So thanks again uh, for, for joining us. And I think something that you probably all learned is that you know healthcare is hard. And as Mike um, Piddle in his slide showed you the cable car to kind of get you up the mountains a little bit. Hopefully we're able to get you to the summit uh, this weekend. And we did see um, the project projects come in. They're all uh, really exciting. And um, bottom line is, it, you know, it takes teamwork. Uh, there are multiple stakeholders to, uh, to address. And I'm sure you encountered that uh, in great detail um, as you went through your projects uh, this weekend. I want to extend, you know, great gratitude for uh, the Google or to the Google Cloud team and the Apple Health team for helping us uh, with all their amazing talks and being available for office hours. You know that was a really nice, comprehensive overview of all the amazing tools that we're going to have available or we have available to us to really innovate in healthcare. And I really do believe that the greatest innovations moving forward will not happen necessarily in the electronic health record, but on top of the electronic health record. And it's through tools like these and Cardinal Kit, which tries to bring it all together, um, that these uh, innovations will ha happen. So we had, uh, just to recap, we had over 500 people register to the event. This is our first event. And uh, we had over 300 members join the Discord uh, server, which is exciting, and about 12 admissions in the end, um, ranging from, um, you know, covering all the topics and areas. You know, in terms of the awards, there will be one uh, grand prize. We'll have a best Cardinal Kit app award. We'll have a best Cardinal Kit feature contribution award, uh, best COVID, uh, actually multiple COVID projects um, that get, you know, $5,000 in Google Cloud credit, uh, among as well as some Google engineering support. And um, we'll also, for every participant that uh, that was here with us this weekend, you're going to get a digital certificate. And we're trying to figure out if this can be uploaded or used uh, on LinkedIn or not. So I think I'm going to uh, go ahead and just, I don't know if the shift team is around or on. If they, I was going to give them the opportunity to announce the awards. But if not, I'll just go through this. So for the first, um, I'm just realizing now I didn't tee it up to build suspense. We're just going to go right into the category, and you're going to see see the winner. So, um, oh yeah, for the, all contributors, this is the um, the basically the certificate you'll get with your name, um, which you could definitely put on your um, your CV. So now for the first award, the best Cardinal Kid app award goes to Trial X. Uh, they, um, their problem that they're trying to address was a more efficient way to find patients with cognitive impairment for clinical trials and research studies. Um, and they uh, basically did a very, very good job of implementing uh, from the onboarding to the surveys to tracking, um, 
you know, using Cardinal Kit, and uh, it was a very good way to monitor longitudinally uh, any sort of neurological uh, changes. So kudos to uh, Sophie Parsa, Elizabeth Feldman, Apollo Zhu, Lucas Wang, uh, Zingyi Xiang, uh, Than Pong, Pong Precha, and Damien Katug. So uh, congratulations on that award. And something I didn't mention is that we'll be contacting you. We do have from your um, from your applications, we have your email addresses, so we'll be contacting you. All right, for the best Cardinal Kit feature contribution, that goes to Budabat team or Budaba team. And uh, basically they've came up with a clever uh, way to uh, uh, to measure or to chart and show or visualize uh, the uh, health metrics uh, that were collected within Cardinal Kit. So uh, that team compri is comprised of Michael Sturpka, Kevin Hartman, and Tyler Lasky. And thank you all of you for all the um, you know the tech the Cardinal Kit team was very appreciative of all the contacts you had with them and all the issues that you tackled. Uh, in addition to this one. All right, next we have the three. So three teams were actually chosen for um, the best projects. There are two listed here. Veronos, so um, they um, did a great job of uh, tracking symptoms longitudinally. That team consisted of Ashley Griffin, Vishnu Ravi, David Bacek, Elsie Ross, uh, Moksh, uh, Nirvan and Joseph Bay, as well as uh, Simran Bhatia, and Home Derm, uh, which did a great job of, uh, especially during these COVID times when it's uh, hard for patients to make it to the clinic, um, many patients with dermatological uh, lesions that needed to be monitored would not be monitored. They just were told to stay or not to come in. So they uh, developed a platform to not only collect images, but um, have those images then be reviewed by uh, dermatologists uh, remotely uh, using a smartphone. And the team members here are Lenny Linos, Antonio uh, Lacio Ventura, Esli Osman uh, Liu, Chris Liu, Molly Liang, uh, Marish Isar, Sarah Kianian, Peter Lee, and Lucy Zhang. Uh, and the last, the third team, which is not listed, uh, was uh, trial. Trial X, they also get a COVID award. And so this is important because they get um, the Google Cloud credits, which will be very helpful. Um, yeah, there's Trial X, I guess it was listed later. So for the best unmet clinical need, that was BHF. Um, that was a very well uh, presented uh, need area. And it was a better way to reduce hospital readmissions for heart failure and non-hospitalized patients with heart failure to improve outcomes, improve quality of life, and reduce costs. And this is not only horrible and uh, difficult for patients, but health systems also are financially dinged whenever uh, patients keep coming back. And uh, it can be very easily managed remotely. So uh, kudos to Steve DeRico, Gary Pintado, Shri uh, Shiraja, Raja Krishnan, Francis Ning, Alejandro Pisano, and Paul, uh, Dr. Paul Wang. And uh, first place, our grand prize goes to Dermender, and uh, they did a they did a very beautiful implementation of uh, CareKit, and uh, we're all Im impressed by it. And uh, it's uh, their need statement was a way to increase compliance of patients with chronic dermatitis, such as psoriasis in order to uh, reduce flare-ups and decrease dependency on medication. So congrats to Robin Sardal and Eti Sinha. Uh, you know, we'll be reaching out to all the teams that won awards tonight, so you'll hear from us, and we'll have to send everything to you. Um, so thank you and congratulations to everyone. Uh, remember to keep checking in to the cardinalkit.org website for up, updates. Uh, please do sign up uh, on the mailing uh, list there as well to get updates. And uh, many of these uh, videos uh, will be um, uploaded there and you'll find links so you can watch them later. We had to do some editing and that's why they're not going up immediately. And also, more importantly, there, you know, the shift team, thank you again to shift for your 
tremendous support during this event in the lead up, the organization, the execution. Um, and they have they run amazing events. And there's a datathon called the Blueprint Datathon, which is happening uh, in October on the 23rd through the 25th. And there's more information um, at the link you see there, blueprint.stanford.edu. And the Health Plus Plus Hackathon, which would normally happen during non-COVID times during this um, this fall, uh, was pushed to the spring of 2021, but it's definitely happening. It's also a tremendous event um, to participate in. And um, also for the Stanford students, uh, there's the CS522, a seminar in AI and healthcare, and they have really some of the biggest names in AI so, uh, you know, join their class. So it's a really remarkable opportunity. So um, that brings us to a close. And I just want to say um, thank you to everyone. And please do not hesitate to reach out to uh, myself or the team. You know, we want to be here to support you. Uh, and if there are any areas you think we could have improved on, I believe you will be getting a survey uh, from us um, to follow as well. So if you could fill out that survey, that would help us figure out where to improve. And that's it. So I'm going to hand it off to Amir, who can finish it off with our, our, our astronaut, the Cardinal Kit astronaut. Um, Perfect.